Hello everyone, Brett back at Altitude Scale Modeling. Another sprue review, my very first wing nut wings kit. And yeah, I'll admit, this is my first one because there's no rigging on it. I've never done rigging and I think I'm kind of afraid of it. But you know, maybe I'll put this together, love it so much that I'll go and buy, I want to buy the Albatross. We'll see. So, we're going to dig into this kit and see what the Wingnut Wings hype is all about. There's many Wingnut reviews out there. This will be my first, like I said. Got this from Spur Brothers for $79.99, I believe. One thirty-second scale Junkers D1. There are five schemes available. I'm liking the one with the purple. There's a little description in various languages. And that's it. Beautiful box art, as you would expect. So let's dig in and see what we got. One, two, three, four sprues, one instruction sheet, one decal sheet, one empty box. So let's start with the main fuselage. I've heard many good things about wingnut kits. My good friend Scott Irvine and my other friend Tim Ivats build them, love them. Like I said, I've been putting it off because of fear of rigging. But looking at this beautiful corrugated style plastic because it's supposed to be corrugated metal. It, this reminds me of the JU-52 I put together where it was corrugated as well and had the whole bottom section there that snapped into place. Good looking plastic. Nice detail inside where the cockpit's going to go. Same thing here on the floor. And I'm liking the way it looks. I will build this sometime sooner rather than later just because I want to know what it's like. But even though it's corrugated, there's some really nice details you can see throughout. Right there in between the corrugation is rivet detail. A couple of lines there. Tail plane, elevators. Again, some nice panels built into the corrugated steel parts. Same over here. Again, the two lines of rivets. I hope you're going to be able to see them, but yeah, maybe right there you can see them right there and there. And the lower fuselage, then inside the floor, the walls, and then these panels, whatever they're for, are also corrugated inside. So a good bit of a detail molding going on with this. Again, nice plastic. Next, we're going to look at the wings. Now, from what I read, this has two Daimler engines in it. Not sure if they were Daimler benzene or not, but they were Daimler for sure. Beautiful corrugation on the wings, rivet spacing between each panel. Nice curvature to the wings. These are the ailerons, one piece. Again, some detail inside here. And here where the ailerons are going to go, that's really nice. If you put the ailerons down, you get to see this nice detail on both upper and lower parts. There's the ailerons. There you can hopefully see the riveting detail between each of the panels and the leading edge right here. So, nice looking plastics per B. And let's get into the last big sprue. This also looks like it's going to be my first aircraft kit with no clear parts. This has got wheels, 
braces, seats, guns, framing, wheel hubs, exhaust pipes. I think these are bracing for something. There's guns there. There's guns. This is probably the back gun, and these are the cowl guns. Nice ventilation. Air vent parts on there. Good cockpit floor detail. Nice cushion detail here. Radiator. Another part of the radiator. I'm thinking this might be a flap. The tires. Continental tires. You can see that, but they say Continental on them. One piece tires with the hubs here with some detail. Again, exhaust parts. Here's those cowl guns. And seat cushion. Radiator. Floor. I'm thinking these are the framing for the cockpit. The other guns with. It's kind of. Hollowed out a little bit on the end, but it'd be easier to drill that way. Good fragile parts. Detail on this part here. No sink marks. No flash. So it's continental on tires on both sides. Good rivet detail on this framing here. The underside of the guns look just as good as the top side. The feed. So one piece guns. Bracing of some sort. No burring on the rounded parts. No burring on the guns. It's going to hold some detail very well. I'm going to have to ask my, look at these little levers here. Tiny little bits. I will be talking to the guys I know who built wing nut kits and see what their approach has been. And here we have the engine. I thought I said there were two engines, but it looks like just one. Cylinders, cylinder head. Four different props, it looks like. This one looks thicker than this one. This one just seems pretty straight ends. And then this one. So pay attention to your direction so you get the right prop on there. Good detail to this engine. It's going to take a weathering very well. I'm going to have to check my references for some wiring. There's a little pistol right here. Not sure if that's a flare gun or a handgun. Some good detail to the parts, the cylinder heads, valve covers it looks like, cylinders. So there might be two engines in here, two different covers. Because it's an inline engine, two different sets of valve covers. Uh, these look like probably the intakes. Again, beautiful prop detail. No burring on the edges of those two. No burring on the edges of those two. Looks like there's some little ejector pins here, 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 throughout these cylinder heads that you're going to have to remove. I mean, they may slot together okay, but it's better just to be safe and move them. This is one piece that looks really nice. So, very good plastic uh, decals by printed by Cartograph in Italy. So we're not going to, yes we are, we're going to take them out. I thought, you know, we all know how great Cartograph is, but let's just take a look at them. Never built a World War I plane before. Beautiful colors. Very closely cut, nice little stencils. Good insignia markings, but the yellow and the red are just outstanding. Which is what you would expect from Cartograph, designed in New Zealand, printed by Cartograph. Oh, and there's a little bit of photo edge. 
little wing nuts plaque that says Junkers D1. Venting. I'm guessing these are the seat harnesses because they have buckles on them. Uh, part of the control in the cockpit and then some little parts. Not too overly thick or thin. Perfect basic photo etch. Let's put all this back in here. And one of the things they're renowned for, Wingnut Wings, is their beautiful instructions. So, a little bit about the aircraft. Pause it if you want to read it. And then the actual size. 9 meters, 28 feet. So the size of it. There's an 180 and a 200 Daimler Mercedes. So it's Daimler Mercedes, not Daimler Benz. Produced from May 1918 to February 1919. 19,000 foot ceiling. Some warnings. A guide to the instru or the um, brain fart. But anyway, a guide. Here's your color call outs. Tammy, a Humbrol Federal Standard. Looks like Tammy, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six you need to mix. Humbrol, you've got one, two, three, five you need to mix. <clears throat> Apply clear varnish to achieve desired gloss or semi-gloss finish. See website for tips on painting wood. This is corrugated metal, so there's not that much wood on there except the prop, probably. Sprue map, numbered. And then these highly detailed directions. So, part numbers. Color colors, green, gray, and C, or C, depending on which version you're building. So you're going to have to go through and decide which version you're going to build. Interior rigging guide. So the different cables you're going to need. And then the wiring, because so there is rigging. Here's a good picture of it. Interior painting guide. Again, another beautiful picture. This is the 180 horsepower Daimler Mercedes engine before restoration, it says. So you can see where spark plug wires go, water pipes go. Very nice. So you need to decide which one you're going to do the D3 or the D3AU. D3AU. I guess this is the same for all in D3AU and D3A. So again, be very careful. What you're going to do, follow the directions. There's an after restoration. Beautiful. Very nice. So that's what it would look like new in 1918. I don't know. Some of that looks pretty modern. These look pretty modern. Wire jacket and eight manifold. Uh, okay, putting the engine in, the cockpit in, putting a few slash halves together, some parts you need to remove depending on the version you're doing. If you're doing version E, remove that part. So, I like these directions. Very colorful, bits of information. Port wing detail, the aileron control, it says to note. Putting the wings on. So those P parts were the cooling jackets. That's nice. So here's the guns for the cowl, oh, the Spandau guns. So it depends on which guns you're doing, I guess. They're both cowl guns. Like I said, I've never built a World War I aircraft, so I know less about this than I do about any other kind of aircraft. Undercarriage and final assembly, axial prop, Neendorf prop. Here's the plane taken apart in a hangar, tail removed. Oops, skipped a page. This is the one I want to do, which is version A, so I'll have to keep that in mind. Version A, here's version B. 
version C. Now I like how the pictures actually point out things you to highlight that you need to pay attention to. So the directions, version D, version E, it's not bad either. 38 victories. The directions are like a little guide to the aircraft. This one has a 200 horsepower engine. Looks like bullet holes, so the exclamation points for. And it says, note the bullet holes and just about everything that's easy to unscrew or tear off has been souvenired by the time the picture was taken. There's a factory, Junkers factory. It's like reading a book. I like the snow covered ones in the Zeppelin hangar. Make a great diorama. I might think about that. I like doing snow dioramas. And then the production designer, the profile artist, the box artist, and the other production manager. There you go. If you need to order damage, if you have damaged parts you need to replace, there's the part number. There's who you contact. And here's some other things available from Wingnut Wings. Sup with Dolphin looks nice too. But I think if I do a one, it'll be the Albatross. So there you go. My first Wingnut Wings kit. My first Wingnut Wings sprue review. Beautiful box art. Beautiful looking plastic. I can't, honestly can't wait to put it together. I'll be posting some photos when I start. It'll be a little bit because I'm in the middle of several things right now. But thank you all for watching. I hope you're having a good start to spring. Finally, we have some warm weather up here in the high country. Thanks. Have a good day. Remember, if you're going to buy a kit like this, don't collect it. Build it. Thanks for watching.